Other things on the weekend, the NFL draft took place. How do you feel like the boys in two-tone blue did? I didn't know how to feel. At first. I'm gonna, if I'm going to be a, as transparent as possible, when that first round was going down, we were up in Chicago. I was praying, cro- crossing my fingers for Joe Walt. Obviously, Chicago, or not Chicago. Uh, the Chargers take Joe Walt. And I thought, okay, the next guy to get is that Ola Fashano kid from, from Penn State because J.C. Latham really wasn't on my, on my radar. The only thing I knew about J.C. Latham is this. Fourth and five, Michigan versus Alabama. And I saw this kid at the combine and I thought for how big this man is, he moves really well, but he played right tackle. We have a right tackle. So when I saw that pick come through, my first reaction was fuck man, did we get, did we get the right guy? And I worry cause I have po- uh, like, what is it? Not postpartum PTSD from Isaiah Wilson, Wilson and these top tier sec schools. We all know like the top tier schools, the top and five also schools. like uh Warmack too. Yeah. Well, well war- yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, he was a guard. He was a guard. He was the pick before me. He was the pick the year before me, uh, tenth overall. But like these top five college schools, they get a silver spoon shoved way up their ass. Michigan included. Don't get me wrong. But like, and you're kind of like, your your hand is held through absolutely everything. So you get worried about guys. But luckily, we we're at the University of Alabama last week, right before the draft, and we got to talk to uh, Tyler Booker. And that guy's conversation, how he held himself, talking about leadership, talking about um, speaking things into existence, just like the process and where he learned that was IMG Academy. Which is, shout out that. Shout out IMG Academy, Bradenton, Florida. I actually trained there for the combine and they were kind of like, they weren't fully finished with everything, but it was, it's an establishment. Yeah. Like if you are, if you want to be the best, you need to go there. If you have the opportunity, you have the skill set to be one of the best, that's the school you need to go to. And he was talking about how they have literally have classes on leadership. Yeah, so JC Latham, the first thing I do is I hit, I hit up the wiki and I see that this kid went to IMG, texted JP the next day, like, give me everything you know about JC Latham. And he's like, checks all the boxes. So that fires me up now. The only thing that worries me is I don't know what he played at IMG, whether it was right tackle or left tackle. And I know he played right tackle starting for two years. G started two years at Alabama at right tackle. And we need a left tackle. So hopefully... For me personally, that's like the hardest thing in the world to do is to switch. It's like riding with your opposite hand. And and that, that's just how my body works. But mm-hmm. I've been around other guys that can literally jump from one side to the next, no problem at all. So Are they looking at do, uh, putting him at, uh, starting him at left tackle? Yeah, I think they came out and they're like, this he's, he's our left tackle. If there's a coach to do it, man, it's Bill Callahan. No question. I'm telling you this, dude. I, at times you sit back as a vet and you're like, man, they got to, you're basically like reliving their college mm-hmm. days working with this guy. But he is a O-lineman whisperer. Yeah. But I and think- he's young. It's yeah. like a, him and Skaronsky, he's got like a younger room, a couple of vets that are early in their second contracts and everything else to where you don't have like an age vet who's kind of like maybe resistant to that type of coaching, that type of style. Mm-hmm. I feel like Coach Callan having like a younger room who are going to be the starters, he'll be able to mold them the way, you know, he's wanting to mold them for the offense. I've never met him personally, but I've all like, an uh, O-line room is like the most unique room in the entire fo- on the football team everyone is so close there's so many of you on the field at one time and there has to be like some sort of gel or some sort of chemistry between all five of you and the entire room and the who, who sets the tone is the offensive line coach mm, yeah. so i hope callahan's hey, in there and he sets the tone the stories yeah. of the cafeteria table in washington with the boys from the old line room how they just kind of sit you're you know assholes tight because he just runs through the table like he is the leader of the old line room great it'd be like shitty can't play for me <laughs> can't play for me can't do it you got to get fucking better hands, like all this stuff. I kind of yeah. sound like he's Italian. He's not Italian at all, but he does kind of have. You sound like that uh, the Eagles coach. Which one? Who's uh, what's the name of the Eagles offensive line coach? Dude, I met him at the combine. He was awesome too, but he literally talks just like that. Yeah, but and he's he, been, he's been there forever. Yeah, Jeff Stoutland. He, he owns is. The he room, this bro. dude's an OG also. He's a stud. But yeah, the, that's what you want, dude. You want an older, heavier set guy running your O-line room that has like 10 key phrases he says on a consistent basis where all the offensive linemen can go behind his back and make fun of the way he talks. Yeah. You, if you have yes, that, yes, yes. you've got the That's, first piece of the puzzle for yeah, the boys. And that is what they have. Yes. Because it's not like a disrespectful, like if Coach Callahan walked up on the conversation, it'd be very much, he, yeah. he, he runs that room. Yes. He runs that room. Yeah, absolutely. Biggest dude. surprise has to be the Michael Penix. <laughs> yes, dude. The Michael Penix grab that is like the number one i guess we'll see pick of all time because i I understand the thought process of what they're doing because the packers right packers have done this for for, i don't know since they've been a franchise it seems like with Favre going into rogers rogers going into love and having that type of success that they've had but the falcons have so many holes 
the Packers, it seems like forever, have had a team established. Like they've had, okay, we have core wide receiver team. We have a core uh, running backs. We have core defense. We know who our core guys are. We're pretty put together. We just got to make sure a quarterback is always waiting in the back lines, ready to go. Yeah. With the Falcons, it's like, Every news article coming out about the Falcons going into this draft was we they haven't had a rusher since Jonathan Abraham. They haven't had a guy. They haven't had somebody that goes in, rushes the power. Someone you got to worry about a war daddy that you're like, boys, we have to block this guy. Yeah. And so and, and you like, pay $100 million guaranteed to Kirk Cousins. You're like, you're going in this season to win right now. To win right now. Yes. And so why not add that piece to the puzzle? And I feel bad for Michael Penix Jr. because the kid is... Uh, an incredible talent. He's gotten through a bunch of adversity. He's had a couple of knee surgeries, mm -hmm. but he still is extremely athletic, extremely uh, able to move so well, can put balls on an absolute dime. He was throwing to, he was throwing to aliens, but like you see him all the way up until the national championship dice people up left, right and center. And he played on a team that was an underdog team for, I don't know, eight of their 12 games. And he can make all the throws like his pocket awareness and mm -hmm. just feeling like when somebody's there and he can make awkward, yeah. awkward throws. I just feel bad because he's going to be like, well, he's to what, 24 now? Probably going to be like 26, That's you know, depending say. on how Kirk yeah. is. 26 when he'll get his first start if Kirk Cousins plays out the remainder of next year's season. Right, right. Because another thought, too, I think Dan Orlowski was talking about it, um, uh, that other angle of having somebody to kind of groom and in the w waiting in the wing when Kirk is done. But also – they think that they'll be competitive and play good over the next couple of years that they would have a lower back half pick. And if you're trying to get a quarterback for the value, that's why they picked them at eight mm -hmm. because they feel like they're going to be later in the draft because they're going to be good. But the counter argument to that was, uh, yeah, but if you're trying to win right now and you think you got, you know, you got your quarterback, why not surround him with weapons right now and not even worry about playing this long game of chess? Uh, but I guess, yeah, man. I guess we'll see you in a couple of years. JP, how do you feel being a being an Atlanta Falcon? I love it. I love seeing Michael Penix in the city of Atlanta. I did see a hilarious tweet. Hang on a second. I think... Uh, yeah, I'm not hearing you. Oh, man. Jeez, got the bad one. I love it. <laughs> I love seeing Michael Penix in the city of Atlanta. And I think the toughest part is the injury history he has. But it's also like Kirk, he is older. Imagine Kirk goes down. Obviously, that would suck. But, like, he's an older quarterback. The risk is higher with him. Mm -hmm. He goes down. Now you do have Michael Penix back there. And black left-handed quarterbacks in Atlanta. Dogs are we're, scared. We're back. Yeah. yeah. Not, we not said we're the, back. Humans are back. Dogs are <laughs> yeah, not. No, dogs are not. I saw this one photo. It was like that dog perked up, eyes wide open. Yeah. Like oh, Atlanta Falcons draft another or, or draft a black quarterback left-handed. All dogs around Atlanta just perked up. <laughs> it was hilarious. What, yeah, did, like, what doesn't make you feel good is the video of uh, Blank talking with the GM. And his GM obviously is trying to give his reason why he <laughs> yeah. did it. But also we don't know what's said. True. We but don't like, know what's said. We can, We're just assuming. But we can read body, body language. language. That's a lot. Do you feel like, though, <laughs> if you're going to take a quarterback eight overall, like that high in the draft, like the owner wouldn't be privy to that before it happened? You would, you would think so, but you, know you just I mean? watch the body language of this clip, and you you think, no, he had no fucking clue. <laughs> He's pitching his ass off. Right, here's you, the thought process. Do you guys want to, at least one of y'all, take a chance at trying to uh, say what he's saying on here and do a little... Yeah, y'all improv. The a little lip read? Yeah, but before you do that, hold on. I, I want to have one more statement about Penix because I heard, I saw this this take, and it's not my original take, but I do agree with it, is when they brought Jordan Love into to the Packers mm -hmm. behind Aaron Rodgers, if you look at Aaron Rodgers' gameplay, it shot through the absolute roof, and it just made both guys way better. So Kirk Cousins might be pissed, and Aaron Rodgers was noticeably mad about the situation. Kirk Cousins' team has come out and said that he's pissed about it. This could be something that like truly just elevates Kirk's game. Competition. Because <clears throat> everyone shits on Kirk for his whole career has only won one playoff game, mm. but he's made all this money, blah, 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 blah. Now I feel like this might be that little extra juice for Kirk. And he's coming off an Achilles, which is a very Ju difficult injury to come off of. And so yeah. you just draft, draft a guy who's had knees, not, not Achilles. All right, let's get to this. All right. Who's, who's going to push your headphones on her and stop playing with that wire. <laughs> and do what? Stop <laughs> messing with that wire. All right. My bad. I think Taylor should be the GM. Go ahead. Oh, I, 
Okay, that's just them talking. Way too loud. Yeah, way yeah, too loud. That was insane. <laughs> um, I don't think you need it because it's going to be the draft. Like, yeah, it's literally them right. talking. All right. Go ahead. You can watch you're, it you're coming in. Uh, you're coming in to ask me. Are you trying to watch the video through first? I'm trying to watch the video through. When you look at the hundred million dollars we gave Kirk, yeah, that's we print money. This is printing money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. America prints You've money. Done you done that? Yeah, you see the debt. Yeah. Now, when you look at Jordan Love, what the Packers did with Jordan Love, what they they sat him for a couple of years. I know he was twenty one. You're saying he's twenty four. He might not play till he's twenty six. But listen to me. If we're competitive for a couple of years now, and we have a later pick in the draft, we just got this quarterback early in the draft and he can be our future have a couple years to play with him that fifth year option you can sneak it on him you can sneak it on him any which way because he doesn't have four years of film he's only got two years of film so you can throw that fifth year option on him and we're going to be we're going to be in the green if we're competitive do you think we're he's like doing the little hand thing do you think we have the talent that the Packers had when they brought in Jordan Love that's a blank saying. Yeah, but I, I personally have no clue. You got you got Kyle Pitts. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, that's a great question. Now, receiver wise, we got a, a what is it, Kenyon Drake? No, Drake, Drake London. My Drake fault. Drake London. London. Coach, you look at it. We got Drake London, we got Kyle Pitts. Now I know he wasn't he wasn't getting a whole lot of separation, but that's why we brought in Coach Morris. Teach these guys to be athletic. Quick on your feet. Teach these get guys some to separate, be athletic. Get some separation. We could add a B. John Robinson. So we got the talent. We got the horses that Kirk can feed it to and Penix can learn from. And also the competition. The cream rises to the top. Aaron Rodgers was pissed off uh, with Jordan Love right behind him. Kirk Cousins is now pissed off. We flustered their whole camp. This is going to lift the ships of everybody. You said twice as many words this whole entire video. (laughs) Arthur Blank literally makes one comment the whole time. (laughs) And you know, like, this video is great, but the video, the video, what the video doesn't capture is Arthur Blank getting his attention. Like, hey, (laughs) let me talk to you for a second over here. Just taps him on the shoulder and he (laughs) just starts going PowerPoint presentation. You look at here, you look at there. You know, he brought that pick. He like held it to his. He called uh, Michael Penix, and he's like, "All right, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get him locked in." Well, yeah, absolutely. Hey, and then just it, sat there and waited. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up yeah. as Arthur Blank quietly just walked over. They're calling Penix like, "Hey, I know the pick is going to be known, like when it comes across the ticker, but try not to say anything. We got to put some fires out before we make this pick. But just know we're picking you." Yeah, dude, Arthur Blank is like the most gangster owner of all time, too. I had think a, so? I had a meeting with them, and it was like two days after I went to uh, Country Thunder, and it was, my voice is gone. I'm still hungover. And I went. I was in Atlanta and drive all the way into the city because they play in, they're, they're in Flower Branch. Where they're, they're like 45 minutes outside. You, you know that. You're a Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, uh, I literally go into like the city of Atlanta, and there's just like this old Victorian building, which is his office. And I go up, and it's like everything is like really nice. Uh, you know, wood and a giant fireplace, and there's a guy on like top a of a dark black ambience. horse. Yeah, and we sat down, just me and him, and talked. And I could barely speak. I was like yelling, trying to just get words out. And I thought, yeah, I'm not going here. <laughs> it's probably not a shot. I'm gonna make it here. Yeah. But he does have that cool owner vibe. It just keeps it calm. You see him too. He's pissed off. His body language is mad, but he's at the hand, it calm, yeah. hands in the pockets. P- brings a just does one of these real quick. Hand back in the pocket. Keeps it calm. You know, all he says is talk to me. Yeah. So why? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So why would you do this? Explain this. Yeah. Then you got your boy, uh, Joe Walt, goes fifth overall to your boy Harbaugh with the Chargers. I know. You think, uh, Joe, you were talking about uh, J- J.C. Latham earlier, going from right to left. Guys can kind of do it. How do you feel like Joe Walt can can, can transition <clears throat> to that left side? I hope he can. I or, hope he can do it. He yeah, and I, we, Him and I actually had a conversation. Wait, hang on. My fault. A transition to the right side. Got you. Uh, I don't know. If I'm being 100 percent honest, like this, I, I know that Joe sees himself as a left tackle. I know that he wants to play left tackle. How do you know? Because I had the conversation with him. <laughs> I talked to Joe about this, and he's like, "I want to, <laughs> I want to play left tackle. I'm not. I, I switching over the right side is a difficult thing to do." Which he and I shared that. And I, what I told him was, when you meet with these teams, tell them that. Like, don't just try to be yes, sir, everything. I can do X, Y, and Z. I can do it all for you. If you want, I can snap the ball, coach. Whatever you want. Yeah. Like, if you believe this is where your skill set is. Then tell him that's where your skill set is. Now this was at the combine, yeah. This is at the combine. And now Joe, he's I mean, he's going to a place they're gonna run the shit out of the football. They're gonna play old school, hard nose, three yards in a cloud of dust ball with Jim Harbaugh at the helm. They're gonna be a good that's gonna be a good ball club. Look at him, just kind of hugs his girl like fuck. Yeah. Put it in his arms as far out yeah. as he possibly can. Like I'm trying to look excited right yeah. now. I fucking hate that. That guy right there at the beard, that's Tommy Condon. Son of Tom Condon. Yeah, that's a sharp beard. That's a sharp beard. Handsome boy. 
they're all they all kind of know the same thing like yeah your boy just hugged him right there like hey i know you're pissed but just yeah, yeah. Just, just be happy be happy be happy it's got to juice you up to the way Harbaugh comes out and talks about people talk about hey we're gonna get weapons linemen are weapons they're the tip of yes the spear. and he's like it's the only position group that doesn't rely on anybody else yeah i love that look at him <laughs> that big bear it looks like a bear that just got oh, done scratching his back fuck. on a tree yeah, yeah. Oh, hopefully it all works out. I mean, it's it's gun. The kid's a talent. He's a stud. And he got picked fifth overall. He's a lot to be excited about. But they got Rashawn Slater. And that guy has, is a proven talent in the NFL. Yeah. They're not moving him to right tackle. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless there's a conversation they have where, you know, Rashawn's like, yeah, I don't mind playing right. I could absolutely jump over there and play right. Joe feels more comfortable at left. But if it's me, uh, no. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be very, I would have been very upset because I lack the skill set to switch my feet. Yeah. Joe might be able to. He might just not know how, how talented he is just yet. Just yet. But just you know yet. how it is. Like, say it's you feel like it's getting forced in those first couple of days in camp. He kind of gets a little flustered. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know, like, what his, how he'll be verbalizing it, like, when he's in the locker room. Like, yeah. I, I can't play right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to be difficult because offensive linemen usually have a hard time, like, expressing themselves, their frustrations. Yeah. They just kind of get internally mad and then call whoever they're closest with yeah, and yeah. then move on. There's not, like, a big blow up yeah. for the normal offensive lineman. Don't be seen, don't be yeah. heard. That's the old line. Another thing that happened, Malik Neighbors got a, a taste of looking at college facilities to NFL facilities and how different they are. Mm, yeah. We'll go through these uh, draft moments here, but you could see Malik Neighbors dapping up the uh, entire New York Giants organization just knowing that he's going, he's entering hell at the moment mm. with uh, Daniel Dones. I think you referred to him as in the press conference. Oof. Dapping up each guy like, God damn it, just fucking put me down here. I'm going to make a lot of money for you guys but don't disrespect me. I feel like that's the vibe that Malik neighbors is giving. Yeah. He's like, Hey, I hope you guys know I'm going to do this. How I want to do this. There are two kinds of football players. When you walk in, you meet the higher ups in a, in an NFL league an NFL team. It's the guy that wants you to respect them immediately. And you're like dapping them up, big energy. Hey coach, how are you excited to be here doing all that? And there's the other guys that's like, you need to respect me first before I respect you. Yeah. And Malik neighbors is giving off the, I need that respect he's, before I start yeah, smiling. He's giving here. off the vibe that I'm going to put in two really good years up front for you guys. And you better be, you better be ready to renegotiate. Right away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you better be. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to renegotiate after my rookie year. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. kind of he's energy. One of those guys for sure. Yeah. But the kids, I mean, He's a stud. Yeah, all the Marvin Harrison Jr. stuff, people were talking about this guy's number one in the draft, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, that classic, the rumors start going around right before the draft happens of, hey, this guy, his yards after catch, the way he's so sharp in and out of his breaks, his like Attacks his the ball. Like everybody's saying yeah. he's, even though Marvin Har Harrison Jr. was the best wide receiver, everybody's saying he's the most explosive wide the receiver. Most explosive. And the dude is a tank too. Yeah. Absolute tank. So I'm excited. They seem like they got their OBJ. A bigger OBJ. Bigger OBJ. Time will tell. Around. We will only see. Let's, what's what's another time. draft moment? Oh, uh, I don't want to mess his name up. The o o Olu Fashanu. Olu Fashanu. Penn State left tackle. His Mom's getting excited. She gives him the big hug. Girlfriend's to the right of the mom. She goes in for the hug. Little leg tap. First team all NBA defensive team. Right yeah. Here. The girl, she's like, it's tough to be in that spot, right? You're trying to be excited. You're trying to maintain composure. A couple claps. You kind of reach over for the old leg touch. Yeah. But mom is just, I mean, look at, look at mom. Just she's hugging hounding nonstop. him. Hounding him. I don't know if that's his dad next to him, but she's tapping him like, hey, get in here. Everybody block out so his, uh, his white girlfriend can't get in this because this, <laughs> this is our baby boy. There, there she kind of goes in for the, yeah. own, hey, you can hug me, but not my boy. That's right. You, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're transmitting the energy <laughs> yeah. through me to him. You're on a yearly contract just like he is. Don't yeah. you fuck this Every up. Every single year, we're going to reevaluate and renegotiate. <laughs> Look at him, helping him up. That is a big man. Even Some big even, legs. Even, Look at said, him. It's Olu, right? Olu he, Fashanu. He, he might be thinking like, okay, mom, you're hugging me a lot right now. Like, let's stand up, get some fresh air. Mom yeah. even reads it out of nowhere, goes and picks that ball off, stands up, hugs him again even more. Yeah, tight coverage. And poor girlfriend back there. She's just kind of waiting her turn, feels cameras on her, I'm sure. She Look just her. tried to make a step, and I and think she, auntie, yeah. auntie said, no, nah, get back. Back it up a second. Yeah, yeah, auntie yeah. said, back it up. Maybe the Jets drafted the wrong Fashanu. <laughs> they should have maybe taken the mom. Yeah. She is out there absolutely making sure her son is not even touched by that girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Getting Incredible. Her time in. True pass protection the entire time. And keeps her at bay, too. She keeps her hand on old girl's leg. Like, hey, you just stay down when this yeah. happens. You let us get it in. <laughs> you see, yeah, she noticed that little, that little leg tap. That was yeah. tough. And then our boy, now a really cool moment, was uh, Braden Fisk. 
with the Rams. You can I'll make sure it's not as loud this time. Let's hope. Go ahead and start playing. The Rams call Fisk here, and this is what, the second or third round? Second round. Second round, and the Rams are trying to get – is this going to be playing the same time I'm talking? Yeah. Okay, well then let's just wait. Just turn it off, Mitch. We can kind of just overlay the uh, the visual. Right. But basically the Rams were on the phone with them fired up. They were trying to get Jared Verse because they took him in the first round. They were trying to get him up to the, to the war room to make that call to him because the boys are going to be back playing together mm -hmm. just like they were in Florida State. But they have a cool moment when Verse gets on the phone and they're just hyped for each other and then – they both just start getting emotional, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, you, you get your speak. boy back. Your boy's back in the saddle with you. What an amazing feeling yeah. that is. Because when you go to a team, you're walking into, you don't know anybody. Yeah. You're essentially going back to camp, making friends. Hopefully you can find a couple guys to sit at breakfast with and have a couple laughs with. But right. you really don't know what's going to happen. Going from East Coast yeah. to West Coast too. And right. for Braden being a, a small, school scat, small school cat before he transferred to Florida State, being a guy ripping it up at the combine, just shot up draft boards mm. for him to get taken. He's going to love McVay too. Like what a fucking coach to play. <clears> for. Yeah, dude, this is such a cool move by Lesney and, and McVay to be able to something as so sacred as the draft. They literally have rooms called the war room that they're in there and they're looking, they have their little things. Okay. This guy's off the board. Now who's our next in line? What do we need? All that stuff. Like they're truly like setting up the future of their team and for them to, to call one of the guys they drafted just a year ago and bring them in because they know that they're boys, that's a that's more of a bro move than I think people even realize. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But to see Fisk have the conversation with the coaches and everything, and it's yes, sir, no, sir. Like every one of these calls is either a kid crying or, yep, let's get it. Yep, yes, sir. Ab yep. Oh, well, absolutely. unless the Caleb Williams call was a little awkward. Yeah, we can get into that a little bit too, but I feel like Caleb Williams. He's just a uh, different cat. Different cat, extremely talented. I'm not getting on Big Cat's list. I yeah, yeah, you don't I want to get on Big Cat's that. list. Yeah, I promise yeah, you, you that. don't want to be on Big Cat's list, but we can still. The minute Big Cat said that everything before this was wiped clean, because I have said a couple of things about Caleb Williams, I'm not, I'm not ruining that opportunity. Yeah, I think yeah. Caleb Williams. Who, who is the receiver that they took? Roma Dunze from Washington, the yeah, wide receiver. Who's a stud? Yeah, but stud. The, the Bears knocked it out of the park with their draft. Yeah. Speaking the, of the, that, do y'all want to rank your top draft grades for teams? My favorite draft was probably, number one, uh, the boys where I started with Washington. Jaden Daniels, I think he's going to be a stud. Stud. Um, but in that division, the Eagles, you got a team that was abysmal on defense, more specifically the secondary last year. And to go and get Cooper DeJean, just just skip, just skip over their first-round draft pick, but Quinion Mitchell, who's an absolute dog, who attacks the ball really well, Cooper DeJean, cornerbacks with their first two picks, and on a lot of big boards, top 10 talents that they got in the first two rounds, and then you uh, get somebody on the edge. What's his name? Jay, is it Jalix Hunt? Mm -hmm. uh, Will Shipley, just another gritty first-in, last-out cat. Uh, you get Jeremiah Trotter, Ju Jeremiah Trotter Jr. as a linebacker, who Jeremiah Trotter Sr. was an animal at oh. Philly back in the day. What's up? He was sick. He was a stud. And for uh, them to get, I mean, I feel like they address a lot of other spots on defense to where a lot of people were calling for Sirianni's head last year. Their defense played really poorly. And again, in that back end, now you got Blankenship, DeJean, Mitchell, uh, Darius Slay. Say the best one. Cooper DeJean. Trevor think. Keegan. Trevor Keegan, they get your boy Trevor Keegan out That's of Michigan. Right. I feel like for good value in the fifth round. Great value somebody... of 172 overall. I mean, the guy, you you can watch the film. Obviously, a dude that's limited athletically, plays in a phone booth, but he is a guy that loves football, loves to get after it. Your classic hog who's going to give you every ounce of effort he can possibly give on a day in and day out basis. And didn't allow a sack in 2023 and played eight consecutive games without uh, allowing one single pressure. That is... I mean, and again, a Michigan man and, coming coming from what's the trophy call where the entire line gets it? Uh, that is the Joe Moore Award. The Joe Moore Award. They were two time, right? Right. And the Michigan played one of the hardest schedules this past year. If you look at the back half of their schedule, they played Penn State, they played Ohio State, they played Alabama, they played Washington. Right. So he's got the he's got the tape. They got the uh, O lineman awards, the Joe Moore Award. So he's coming from two time good, Joe Moore good O line culture in Michigan and going to a great O line culture with Philly. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there was a lot of reports coming out of the combine of like higher ups GM saying that like these Michigan cats are head and shoulders above mentally where usually where usually guys are at going from college to the NFL and that's a product of Jim Harbaugh and the culture that Absolutely. he established. Uh, yeah. I mean, thirteen guys drafted. 
13 guys ready to go. Program record. That's awesome. I do like that. It's very interesting that you picked the guy, team that probably picked the most amount of white guys. That's very well confident of you. <laughs> but uh, also, just to play devil's advocate, you know, they're one of the rivals of Washington. I do feel like Washington had a great draft, but for the Eagles, again, to address, absolutely. They, I think they traded up for Cooper as well. But to go after spots to where they need filled, um, I think that that's why they're, they've they been my favorite draft. There's nothing more heartbreaking to me than when I saw Cooper DeGene fall out of the first round. That moment that you, me, uh, Stephen Shea, Roan, and Brandon Walker shared yeah. was so nice before you got duped. I know, I know, which sucks because it was coming from those kind of like, you know, those, uh, I don't know how to call them, the, the credible bot uh, X profiles, like the Dove Climb and the ML Football, the JPA or whatever it was like. That those are the ones I saw it on because they, you know, you would I would type in like if it, uh, the Eagles are drafted, I type in Eagles, and then usually the most recent tweets are saying, "Oh, so and so they're they're getting this guy." Yeah, it had been put up, and then when we went back afterwards, it was then deleted. But your boy got duped, and it was tough because you know based on there was a tweet going around last week that Cooper DeGene was our Jackie Robinson. <laughs> And that was, so that was a you. big moment for you that know, was not for, your tweet. No, 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 no. People thought it was, but that was not my tweet. But uh, it was a big moment for you know our culture. We haven't had a a first round cornerback maybe ever, or maybe since like the seventies. We haven't had one start. We haven't had one start, and so who knows if he's going to get to play corner? They're going to move him to safety. Can you imagine what it's going to be like for him to line up against AJ Brown in yeah. practice? <laughs> yes, <laughs> after AJ getting paid. Yeah, this strapped AJ's gonna give him hell maybe or what? AJ might not practice AJ might, might not practice that boy he's, on, he's one of the man he's might, the man out might out work ethic him I don't know maybe he might grind it out he might know the plays come before the play even comes that needs to be the hard knock series Philly is Philly and not only that Devontae Smith got paid yeah but I feel like he doesn't talk like AJ talks yeah yeah, yeah. AJ, AJ is, is a crazy AJ's talent. like that he, AJ is him those rookie corners, whether you had question marks on the uh, Mitchell playing at a small school and against the competition, he'll be getting the best competition at receiver playing against the Eagles with Devontae Smith, A.J. Yeah. Brown, and those boys. He, he's going to find out real fast if he's going to make it or not. Yeah, absolutely. Real fast. And you're going to you're going to start callousing your brain mentally when you do get beat because you're yeah. definitely going to get beat. Can I say what my favorite draft team was? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. I, I think it's very clear cut, and they, they started doing it in the first round. Uh, my number one is going to have to go to the Minnesota Vikings. They got the best quarterback talent in this draft. They've gotten a proven winner in this draft, a guy that is going to eat, sleep, and breathe the game of football. And then what did they do seven picks later? They turn around and get arguably the best edge rusher in this draft. Best defensive player. Yeah, edge rusher is exactly what I just said. Defensive player. Dallas Turner from the oh, University of Alabama. Yeah, saying overall. They're saying this guy's a Will Anderson 2.0 type of guy. Like, you just cloned him and brought him over. You see the leadership qualities that Will Anderson has at the Houston Texans. He's bringing that to the Vikings. We have got something cooking up in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. It's going to be a special time. The other guys, listen. Don't know a whole lot of who they are. I'm going to be real with <laughs> but you, you guys. But you know J.J. McCarthy. But you know J.J. McCarthy, and we know Dallas Turner. These other guys, I hope they pan out. I hope they're absolute studs. We are going to have uh, – I'm, I'm now a Chargers fan, a Vikings fan, and a Tennessee Titans fan. Yeah. I mean, look, J.J. couldn't have went in. Out of all the quarterbacks, I feel like he might have went into the best situation. You got Addison, uh, Justin Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson. Um, who's their running back? Who? From Minnesota? Alexander Madison. Madison. Yeah, Addison. Madison. You got Addison, a lot, Madison. You got a lot of weapons. You got a, a solid old line. Uh, they built defensively because uh, they got better with Coach Brian Flores being their, their DC. But you couldn't, as a rookie quarterback going in to a situation where you got Coach Kevin O'Connell who – understands quarterbacks a little bit of a quarterback whisper coming from McVay was in uh, Washington obviously is coach Kirk Cousins a lot uh coach Wes Phillips who's the OC like he's in a very good situation with a great coaching staff and a lot of weapons around yeah him. the only player that could, you probably could argue is going to the best situation as a quarterback is going to be uh Caleb Williams the Keenan, Keenan Allen from the Chargers they get a, a Dunze in the what was it the ninth pick 
the ninth pick overall, and the kid is an absolute stud. And so he's got a whole bunch of weapons going into the situation with a fan base that is dying. Right. Dying for some To me, wins. that though, you know, that comes with a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure. You're the first mm-hmm. overall pick. I agree with you. He does. He's going into a good situation, but it's kind of like, you know, you're going into win now. Minnesota is like similar, but I just feel like as far as a young guy coming into something, coming into a culture that hasn't been on fire mm-hmm. the way the Bears have. The thing about Caleb Williams is he's obviously a unique cat, and I had my comments about him after the combine, but the pros of having that personality is it really seems like he does not give a shit. Even Keel. Who's saying anything yeah. about him. Like he's going to paint his nails. He's going to do the bears a million times. He thinks that's super funny, even though that wasn't a good Chicago accent. He is going, he's like buying in and also buying in the way he buys in. He's going to stay true to himself. If he does have, he has the talent. Now we just need to see if it shows up in Chicago. Another quarterback that had a phenomenal weekend, Dylan Rayola out of Nebraska. Do we want to hit on the Nebraska spring game? I don't, but you can. <laughs> Any one last thing for NFL draft. Uh, one last thing for NFL draft. J- JP slowing me down before I start getting off about just a, just some kind of juice for all these high school kids coming out in the first round. Five five stars were picked. Fifteen four stars. Nine three stars. One two star and two undrafted or un two ranked, unranked, unranked guys. guys for the first round. It does. I mean. It isn't about how you start, it's how you finish. No question. And that's not even the finish either. Right. That's just a new right, start. Right, right. Turning of a chapter right there. That's the thing that dudes need to figure out the most is like you've gotten drafted, you've gotten that call, especially the kid, the cats that sit in the first round. Like your bank account is forever changed. Mm-hmm. But it's now, it's proving that you are worthy of that bank account. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now you have to play up to the level that you're being paid. It's no longer a, hey, let's get the classes in order. Make sure we show up on time. It's either you're going to or you're not going to. Right. And that'll that'll dictate your career uh, other than injuries. Because you being a first round pick, second round, whatever round you're drafted in, there's a whole other wave that comes in next year. So if you don't start showing what you're worth out of the gate, like that's what drafts are for. Mm-hmm. Obviously, everybody's spotlighted, showered with love, just ass pats all over the place. You're making all this money, hugs, cries, all this stuff. But now, you know, Vrabe, it's like, hey, it's not about uh, how you get here. It's that you're here now. Right. Um, so and those, ass, those ass pats right. and all that, the minute you put on the helmet, it's over. Right. No more ass pats, none of that stuff. Like you need, it's now time to go to work. And it's a, it's such a crazy thing that I don't think people talk about is if you are picked in the first round of the NFL draft, you're riding that high like crazy. You're getting more text messages than you've ever had in your entire life. You walk in, everyone's dapping you up. That first practice is going to be a tough practice. Everyone's going to be gunning for you. All the defensive ends, if you're a tackle, they're all going to be gunning for you. They want to show that, oh, you picked him. I can make the team off this guy by beating him. Right. You got coaches are now going to be hard on you because the expectation is higher on you. There's a whole lot more that comes into it. So when you leave that first practice while trying to digest a whole entire playbook, it is very, very different than the first moment you walked in dapping everybody up. And getting, getting coached hard. It's like yes. your lifestyle is not outside of the building where you're doing autograph deals, you're doing marketing deals, you're getting hooked up all around the right. city. All these people want to do all these things for you uh, because your lifestyle is going to be in those four walls basically all year long, especially as a rookie.